buy fine pieces of artwork, wine, sculptures, even cars. But you can also buy luxury designer goods like an Hermes Birkin, a Chanel 255, or an exclusive limited edition Louis Vuitton bag. You can get all of those things at these auction houses and more. But there are a few tips and tricks you need to know to make sure you're getting the best deal. First off, how do you even find when an auction is taking place? That's pretty simple. All you have to do is register with each auction house. Again, Sotheby's, Christie's, Heritage Auctions, even go to liveauctioneers.com is an auction clearinghouse, if you will, that I found during a board Saturday during the coronavirus pandemic. It basically lists all the auctions that are going on in the United States and across the pond overseas at any given time. And there's always something going on. Once you register with these auction houses and you, you know, fill in your newsletter profile, what interests you, what you like, what you don't like, you'll get alerts about these various auctions. In December, for example, Heritage Auctions here in Dallas had a luxury designer accessories auction. They gave me an alert two months in advance, so they really did build up the anticipation of the auction itself. Once the auction date approached, I went through the catalog. You can browse the catalog virtually. It used to be you had a big thick bound catalog book. Now you just browse the catalog virtually, which is really pretty easy. And you go in and you just click what it is that you like. You can heart it, you can star it, whatever the specific auction house um, does for its you know, way to save something. You just go in and, and save whatever it is that you like. The thing you need to do and you need to consider is your budget. How much are you willing to spend? Because before you can even start bidding at auction, you have to register and you have to provide a credit card or a bank account. So you have to have the funds to be able to bid. You have to pre-register. This is a pretty easy process and takes no time. It really is pretty simple. You just provide a credit card or a bank account number and you're just fine. These are safe. I've been doing this for years and I've never had a compromised situation. Obviously, that's just my experience. Um, make the intelligent decision for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. Consult the auction house if you have any questions. Now, once you've gone through the auction itself and you've picked a few things that you like, you really need to think about a budget. Think about what it is you're willing to spend for any particular item. I'm not in the market for a Birkin or anything super expensive in the you know fifteen to twenty thousand dollar range. I love to purchase Hermes scarves, uh, Hermes decor, things of that nature uh, to add to my collection. We're going to get into some items that I purchased in that December 2020 uh, luxury accessories auction and, and detail whether or not these items were a bargain. So think about your budget, what it is you're willing to spend. On auction day, you basically watch the auction online or you'll receive alerts about the auction coming up. You watch the auction online and then you get to bidding. Um, you sit, send in your bid as the auction is taking place live. It really is kind of an exciting process. This is where your emotions can come into play and you don't wanna get wrapped up in the emotion of overbidding or overspending what it is that you actually allocate to spend. You know, that can easily be done as you're competing against someone else for an item. You see someone else putting in a bid that exceeds your bid and you really do in fact want an item, you can sometimes click that bid button and exceed what your allocated budget was. So just be real mindful of that. Now, what you need to consider when it comes to auctions is the buyer's premium. This is the premium or the fee, if you will, that an auction house adds to the final total price of what it is that you have bid. So say you bid $100 for um, an Hermes scarf. Now that would be a deal and I actually did get two Hermes scarves at a French auction house um, in June of 2020 for 125 euro, about $150. That's about $75 per scarf. Um, say you bid $100 and you win an Hermes scarf for $100. An auction house charges anywhere from, I've seen, 15 to 25%. That's typically a sliding scale. The more you spend, the lower the buyer's premium. But that buyer's premium has to be factored into your overall budget. So a $100 scarf 
with the with the $25 buyer's premium tacked on is now a $125 scarf. Always something you need to be mindful of. And those buyer's premiums do tend to be kind of pricey. Uh, they aren't cheap and the auction houses certainly do have to make their money for putting on those wonderful productions of those auctions themselves. So always have that in mind. Then you have to think about sales tax. If you're bidding on an item with an auction house that has an outpost in your state, you will most likely have to spend whatever your state sales tax is and add that to the final total. Where I live in Dallas, Texas is eight and a quarter percent. So you buy that scarf for $100, you add the buyer's premium, so that scarf is now $125. If, for example, the uh, buyer's premium was 25%, and then on top of that, you add eight and a quarter percent in terms of sales tax. So right then and there, you're not just spending $100 for the scarf. You're spending close to $140 for the scarf at that point. Something you absolutely need to have into consideration as you participate in the auction process. Once you have completed your bid and you've won an item and the auction has concluded, you will receive an email from the auction house detailing every single item you've won, what their pay terms are, and what their deadline is for receiving payment. If you don't play by those rules, you might get banned from the auction house itself and not be allowed to do business with that auction house again if you fail to pay by the indicated date. Now, another thing that you need to keep in mind with auctions is the buy it now opportunities or the post auction buys. Those absolutely exist. Sometimes an item in an auction doesn't even get bid on. Sometimes it doesn't meet the reserve. So once the auction has concluded, you'll have the opportunity to do a post auction buy. That's exactly how I purchased this Kelly wallet. It's a Kelly wallet, Hermes Kelly wallet with Gillies is what these are called. Hermes Kelly Gillies wallet in swift leather. I had this on my watch list for the Heritage December 2020 auction. It came up during the auction process. I actually didn't have the chance to bid on it because I was out running around doing things. I didn't sit for four hours in front of my computer for the auction, so I missed it. But because I had liked this item, I got an alert about a post-auction buy once this particular lot had concluded. Now, the auction wasn't even over, but because I had pre-registered, I'd put in my preferences and my likes and my items that I was watching for that particular auction, I got an email alert saying, hey, you can bid on this even though the lot has concluded and we've moved on. Put in your max bid. So I put in my maximum bid, the maximum amount I was willing to pay for this particular item, and I ended up winning it. What was interesting is that my max bid that I put in after this lot had closed included the buyer's premium. Say I put in $100. Well, that would include the $25 buyer's premium for this particular piece. So I bid a lot more than $100. I ended up getting it and I was excited about that because uh, it included the buyer's premium and the price I was willing to pay. Of course, we had to add sales tax on top of that. So I had to pay a little bit extra which is just fine. I was happy with the purchase and I'll show you uh, the breakdown of this versus full retail a little bit later in this video. Now, once you've paid everything and you're done with the process, you've settled your uh, bids and your items with the auction house, now you have to go about getting your items. Many times they must be shipped to you, but here's a fun little thing that you can do. If you live in the market, where the auction house is located. Again, I'm gonna use my example, Dallas, Texas Heritage Auctions is located in Dallas, Texas. You can save money on shipping by simply reaching out to the auction house and saying, look, I live in this market. I'm happy to come by and pick up my items that I won in the auction rather than having you ship them, pack them, and have to handle them. That typically is another substantial fee that these auction houses tack on, anywhere from 20 bucks to a couple thousand, depending on the item it is that you purchase. If it's a big piece of furniture, you're gonna pay a significant amount in shipping and handling fees. They will do that for you. They're absolutely willing to do that. It saves them the labor costs. It, it saves them the, the hassle of packaging it and shipping it. All you have to do is just let them know 
even put it in your profile. Some auction houses will allow you to do that. Put it in your profile, put a no ship clause in your buyer's profile, and you can just swing by and pick it up. Another tip, if you're buying something at auction overseas, like these scarves, this Hermes scarf, I bought from Druot Auctions. I actually bought these two scarves from Druot Auctions in France in June of 2020. Um, bought them in France. Did have to pay the shipping cost for that, obviously, but I bought this um, very famous Ex Libris scarf from Hugo, designed by Hugo Greg Carr, I'm sure I'm mangling his last name, but this is a very famous scarf. Not in great condition, but it's one I certainly wanted to add to my collection. Uh, very excited about this one when I got it. But I purchased this one as well as this one. These were part of the same lot. I'll show this to you. This is the Sun King scarf, I think, if my, if my memory serves me. I purchased these two scarves at auction June of 2020 from Druot Digital Online. And um, obviously, like I said, I had to pay the shipping fee, but because I live outside the European Union, I didn't have to pay the VAT tax or the VAT. You know, if you go buy something overseas in Europe, uh, American citizens or people who do not live in that country or are not natives of that country do not have to pay the VAT or the tax on it. So I didn't have to pay the tax. I did have to reach out to them after they sent me the invoice, noticing that the VAT was included in my final invoice I did have to say, hey, look, I live outside the EU. I live in the United States. Do I have to pay the VAT? They hit me back almost immediately within a couple hours, despite the time difference, and said, no, actually, you don't. Uh, I did have to pay shipping and handling, which was about 20, 30 euro, roughly $45, $50, but I was happy for it. Um, those two scarves, again, they were 125 euro. Um, I bought them both together at the same time in one lot, uh, dollar to euro conversion, does that uh, up to about $151.69. So about $75 per scarf for those two vintage Hermes scarves. I was thrilled with that purchase. Actually bought a few other scarves with that particular auction. I was able to combine all the pieces that I purchased in one shipping bundle. So I saved on shipping and I didn't have to pay the VAT either. What about other items? other items like this that are a little bit more pricey, a little bit more coveted, a little bit more unique and exclusive. Are these a deal? Let's dive into that. This is the Hermes Kelly Gillies wallet. It's in excellent condition, except for what you probably see right here, this little oil spot. So this was marked down significantly less than what I would pay for it at full retail price at Hermes, a boutique, online, or on the secondary sites. Beyond that, it's in absolutely pristine condition. Um, no issues at all with anything else. You know, it came perfectly packaged. This is the wallet I bought at the Heritage Auction in December of 2020. All the card slots are perfect. Everything about this wallet is absolutely perfect. I'm thrilled with it. I ended up bidding $1,800 for this wallet. So what I paid for the wallet was $1,440. With the buyer's premium, it was $1,800 plus local and state sales tax. This ended up being $1,948 and 50 cents through the Heritage Auction purchase. Uh, online, according to January 2021 Hermes.com listings, a similar wallet without the Gillies, which I can't find, but a similar wallet of this particular size is $3,550. So taking all that into consideration, I'm really happy with this particular purchase price on this wallet. Now I should say, because I know this is a question you're going to ask, all of these auction houses guarantee authenticity. They go through a rigorous authentication process with all of these items to ensure you're buying something that is authentic and not a fake. Um, if something does turn out to be a fake or a replica, they will absolutely refund your money. So in this particular auction, I also got two more pieces. They're home decor items. These gorgeous 
Hermes trays. They were a part of a lot. Uh, they were two in one lot. And I gotta be honest with you, when I purchased this, I thought I would really like this one better. It's an orange and green equestrian scarf. It's in great condition. It's got the goat skin on the bottom. It had a tiny little chip in the corner. No big deal, not concerned with that. Um, I thought this is the one that I would love the most in my little lot. I also purchased this square one. It's called Le Pivon. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that the wrong way, but um, this one I absolutely fell in love with. Uh, the green and the pink I thought were just stunning. It was a beautiful color. I just fell in love with them. Both of them are now on display in my house. I'm so thrilled with these purchases and I'm thrilled, quite frankly, with what I paid for it. Uh, both of the trays together were $350. 437.50 with the 25% buyer's premium that Heritage tax on at the end with sales tax. These were $473 and 69 cents. January 2020 on Hermes.com, a similar large ashtray like the horse ashtray ranges anywhere between 610 and 700 dollars a similarly sized smaller ashtray like the gorgeous one with the flowers the pink and green starts at around 510 dollars so basically i paid less than 250 bucks for two hermes ashtrays that i absolutely love so again for me as I'm building my collection, these were an absolute deal. So do I recommend shopping and building your luxury designer accessories collection by shopping at auction houses? Resoundingly, yes. You do have to watch out for the buyer's premium, the shipping charges, the sales tax, depending on where you are, and you certainly have to inspect the items online before you purchase. Beyond that though, once you start getting in the rhythm of being involved with the auction process and watching the auctions, it's a lot of fun and it's a great way to add items to your collection. To get familiar with the auction process, I suggest just watching a few online. It's good theater, quite frankly, but it's also a way to see what things go for, how high they're going, uh, what tends to be some popular items, what tends to be some not so popular items. Take a day and just start watching a few auctions before you start bidding and buying. That's a great way to familiarize yourself with the process and, and not get too trigger happy when you see people bidding and kind of going crazy for some items. I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, I really enjoy discussing my experience with buying at auctions and uh, really, you know, buying all of my luxury designer accessories. I think the purchase process is just as much fun as having them and showcasing them and carrying them and displaying them in my home as well. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see me discuss here on my YouTube channel, please let me know. I'm always reading your comments and I'm so appreciative of every like and dislike. They help me and every comment that you share. Even much more appreciative of every subscriber who takes the time to hit that button and receive the notification and become a member of my YouTube family. I have links to every single auction house I have mentioned down below, as well as some of my favorite secondhand luxury designer accessories and handbag sites like Fashion File, The Real Real, and The Rebag, or Rebag, I should say, listed down below as well. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the time you've spent, and I look forward to chatting with you again very soon.